Well, our next road warrior is Mary Roser. Mary, uh, where, where were you born and where did you grow up? Well, I was born in Glendale, California, and grew up in Glendale and Eagle Rock. And my father worked for the Department of Water and Power uh, for Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So as a, child, as a young child, we started coming up to Camp High Sierra, which was owned by the city of Los Angeles and was a family camp. Mm -hmm. operating in Mammoth Lakes. And what did you do at the camp? Uh, well, when, when I was little, I just participated in all the organizational activities that they had. And it was a family camp, so they had um, activities for everybody. And it was a wonderful place to stay. And but that was your summers? That was during the and summer. And then you'd go back to Glendale and yes. continue your schooling there? Right. Uh, and we just came on vacations. But then, when I went to college, um, I worked on the staff at Camp High Sierra, mm -hmm. which meant I was up in Mammoth the whole summer. Where did you go to college? I went to UCLA, and then I came to... What did you study there? I was an art major okay. and studied painting and drawing and mm -hmm. uh, all forms of art and got my teaching credential. Did you use some of that art training when you were uh, counseling uh, campers at uh, <laughs> Camp High Sierra? Yes, uh, we had a little crafts project, <laughs> which we did for the young children. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I designed some little craft projects for the children to mm -hmm. do. Now, um, I know from talking to you before that on one of those summers you, you met a, a, a young man named Lou. Yes. Tell us about that. <laughs> The uh, summer of 1952, um, I was assistant manager then at Camp High, and um, we were very active with various um, dance. We had a dance every night, or we had a program of some sort. We had a skit night, and uh, one of those evenings, uh, Lou came down to Camp High, and uh, I met him there that evening and then continued to see him during the summer. He we'll was get his uh, version in a little while, but tell me, what did you know about him at that point? Uh, wh what was he doing up here? He was working at the Mammoth Lakes Pack Outfit as a packer, and I knew that, that he worked there. And one of my jobs as uh, working at Camp High was to lead the hour rides and the half-day rides that uh, the Camp High guests uh, went on at the pack station. Mm -hmm. So I would take guests up to the pack station for their uh, hour ride, or sometimes it was a two hour ride or a half day trip. And that gave me an opportunity to see some of the back country too. Perhaps we should uh, uh, give our viewers a little bit of geography. Uh, the uh, camp that you were working at was just out of Mammoth Lakes, up Lake Mary Road. It was right? just off the Lake Mary Road, below Twin Lakes, okay. before you get to And then Twin where's Lakes. the pack station? And How the pack station is, is on up the road before you get to Lake Mary. It's located between Twin Lakes and Lake Mary. Now, uh, when did you make your commitment to stay and live in Mammoth? Uh, after Lou and I were married, we worked at McGee Creek Pack Station, and then we worked at Rainbow Pack Outfit, which is on Bishop Creek near South Lake. And we did that until um, 1960, when the pack station came up for sale. And we had, uh, as we worked at other pack stations, 
uh, we had determined that what we wanted to do was purchase a pack station. We wanted to make that our life work. And so when Mammoth Lakes came up for sale, we were, of course, determined that that was the one we really wanted. And Mammoth Lakes Pack Station is the one just below Lake Mary, the one where you took your campers? Yes. Okay. And how many years did the two of you operate that pack station? It was over 38 years. 38, my goodness. We were at, at the pack station. What's it, tell me a little bit about what is involved running a pack station. Well, a lot. Um, at, at our pack station, we had both uh, short rides, which would be um, hour and two hour and half day, all day rides, that were guided rides and would return to the pack station after making a scenic trail ride. Uh, we also packed in campers to the backcountry, which was just out of the lakes basin. And people would take a pack trip to go into their favorite lake or stream and stay there for often a week. And uh, we would then pack them out. Or some of our trips were all, what we called all expense trips, where we would send a cook and a packer. And they would either travel throughout the area or they would make a base camp and do short rides from the base camp. So we had a lot of, of tourists uh, guests every day that came through the pack station. We also hired packers and guides who lived at the pack station with us. Mm. So we, uh, we had to uh, have a living quarters for them mm -hmm. and we also provided meals. What's the length of season for a pack station in this part of the eastern Sierra? Well, it depended a little bit on the uh, the snow from the winter. And you're at 8,000 feet yes, elevation. Yes, actually we're almost 9,000 feet at the pack station. Okay. So it, it kind of depended a little bit on the winter, but we tried to be open shortly after Memorial Day or as close to the 1st of June as we could. And then our season extended through uh, almost the end of deer season, mm -hmm. which was in October. Now, you and your husband were a part of the Mammoth Lakes community. Were you a part of this uh, resources committee that was uh, concerned about a road? Yes, yes. Uh, we had, uh, pre when we first bought the pack station, we still lived down in Southern California, and we came up for the summer and then returned to Southern California. But we had moved to Mammoth Lakes, and Lou was working for Caltrans at that time, plowing snow. So he was intimately acquainted with snow and uh, we lived in Mammoth Lakes at the time when, uh, when we formed this resources committee. Can you remember the beginning of that committee and what, what was the nature of the rumors about the road? What, what, where did you think it was going to pass? Well, prior to uh, moving to Mammoth uh, back in the 1950s, I believe it was in, <clears throat> excuse me, in 1958, uh, my sister and brother-in-law uh, became active with Jenny Smith, who was Jenny Schumacher at that time, in working on a petition because the road was being pushed at that time. And Jenny had worked up a petition uh, to get people who were visitors in the Lakes Basin, residents, and any other people who lived in the area or worked in the area to oppose this road. And at that time, they were proposing that the road would go over uh, the road that goes into Mammoth Lakes and now ends at Horseshoe Lake. At that time, that was Highway 203. And that was slated to be where the road would continue on. So it would go over Mammoth Pass. So it would go over Mammoth Pass. Right by your pack station. Right. And this was before we owned the pack station. Uh, this petition was organized. Mm -hmm. And so we helped uh, distribute that petition and get signatures of people who opposed having this road. As you know, Jenny Smith is uh, not up in Mammoth this summer and we're not gonna be able to interview her. So I wonder if you could tell uh, the viewers a little bit about Jenny herself and what role she played in this committee. Well, she was uh, really the glue that kind of helped, 
helped all of us stay together and be on the same page. Uh, we had met Jenny and her then husband in 1953 when we were working at McGee Creek Pack Station. And, <clears throat> and at that time, uh, I believe Jenny was teaching school in Bakersfield. But uh, she later moved to, after she and, and her husband, Jerry, uh, split up, she moved to San Francisco and was working in the office for the Sierra Club, helping with their publishing. Um, and we had become, by this time, we had become very good friends with Jenny. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we were kind of kept apprised of what was going on by Jenny because she was hearing uh, what was happening and she was very good friends with Judge Sherwin, whom we became very good friends with also. Uh, so we were kind of uh, aware of what was happening uh, during this interim. I'll just interject here that Judge Sherwin was a judge in Solana County, uh, east of Sacramento, but he was uh, descended from a very distinguished Eastern Sierra family, wasn't he? Yes. And whenever we drive from Bishop up here to Mammoth, Lakes, uh, what do we drive on? The Sherwin Gray. The Sherwin Gray, <laughs> the famous Sherwin Gray, which my research showed was several different roads at different times, but once it got labeled the Sherwin Gray, I think it always will be. I um, think it from always From the is. original <laughs> Sherwin who uh, is. Um, someone has said that uh, Jenny was the scribe of this uh, yes. committee because she did, she had, there was so much written output from her. Yes. Yes, she did a great amount of letter writing, and she wrote notes to us continually apprising us of what was happening or what she thought we ought to uh, know about. Uh, she was very, very active in this from day one. Now she wrote a pretty good book, too, didn't she? Yes, she did. Mammoth Lakes, Sierra. Yes, yes. And it's probably it's in its eighth edition it's probably still the best guide into this area that's it ever absolutely been written. Is. Right. She was writing that book um, the first year we had the pack station uh, she was spending the summer at her cabin uh, up in the falls tract and uh, we of course were at the pack station and our first summer there and we seemed to have cook problems and uh, we kept losing our cooks which meant that I was cook again, and I was expecting a baby in August, which was Meryl, and uh, so we prevailed upon Jenny, and bless her heart, she came down and helped me a lot with the cooking, mm -hmm. and um, when we didn't have a cook and, and needed early breakfast, she would come down and, and do breakfast for me many mornings. Mm -hmm. And uh, later on, after Meryl was born, she continued to come down and help with, with the cooking and whatever needed to be done around the pack station. She was an essential aid that summer. In conversation with Chip Van Natten, um, I we were reminded of a uh, trip that your husband took over I-80 in the middle of a snowstorm. Um, what was your viewpoint here? Did you know anything about that snowstorm? Well, it was snowing in Mammoth, <laughs> so I knew that they had a good chance of having snow on their trip, and as I remember, it snowed quite a bit that day and evening in Mammoth, and uh, I didn't know what they were experiencing until they got to Sacramento and Lou called me from my sister's house in Sacramento. Right. So then I heard about their uh, difficulties in going across and having to stop. And, and when he came back, uh, what did he tell you about the hearing? Did he feel pretty good about he it? He was very pleased about uh, the hearing. Uh, they had, uh, as he told me, they had split up in uh, twos and uh, were talking to various assemblymen so that they could reach everybody. And one of the people that he interviewed was uh, Pete Wilson, who later became governor of California. And Senator uh, uh, 
United States Senator from yes, California Yes, Senator as well. before he became oh, right. uh, governor. And in my story, we find that Wilson played a role at different steps uh, along the way, but yes. uh, always uh, helping to stop the road. Mm -hmm. um, I will just interject here that this uh, famous ride through a snowstorm resulted in the committee responsible for the highway system deciding that the tentative route across Mammoth Pass or a Minaret Summit would not be put in the state transportation grid, which was a big blow for the campaign against the road. Now, about uh, uh, four years later, another phase in the battle took place. Now, the, the proposed road is not in the state system, but there's federal money behind it. And uh, there's an attempt on the part of Ike Livermore to stop that federal money. And he doesn't win at the local agency level, and he appeals to Washington, D.C. Uh, when did you and your husband first hear that there might be a visit from Governor Ronald Reagan to the Eastern Sierra? I would say perhaps a week earlier, Jenny had told us that there was something that seemed to be in the works as far as planning. And uh, I don't think she knew whether Reagan himself was coming over, but that there was going to be something happening in about a week. So we were aware that something was going on, but uh, we didn't know exactly what. And when did your PAC station become involved? Uh, Bob Tanner called Lou. Uh, I can't remember if it was the day before or two days before. I think he may have called him twice. And First Bob Tanner was the proprietor of another pack station. Of Red's Meadows. Red's Meadows. I think he called Lou, first of all, to tell Lou about this and that uh, Lou might want to go uh, or at least participate in it. And then he called, I believe it was the day before, and uh, told us that he needed more horses. They didn't have enough saddle horses. And asked if Lou could bring a, a stock truck full of our horses down, uh, saddled and ready for people to ride. What role did you play in that? Um, I was just really back up, I think. <laughs> uh, making sure they had their lunches with them in case there wasn't uh, food on the trip. Uh, uh, I was, of course, very interested in the whole thing and we were didn't you ride or want to ride along oh i would have loved to have ridden along that why didn't you really well we were informed that it was men only and that uh, since nancy reagan was not coming on the trip that no women were invited and i i was a little bit uh, uh i thought that was kind of a, a funny thing that this was so you waved out. goodbye to your husband and your son, and son, our son Lee, <clears throat> our son Lee, who it was how old at the time? He, it, I believe, may have been on his birthday that the ride took place, and he was, I believe, he had just turned 17. And so he went along uh, with some uh, saddle horses. Yes, and and he went along as a um, as a wrangler on, on the trail. All right. And, and by the way, uh, perhaps this is a time to point out that there's a, a Roser dynasty, because uh, what, what is Lee doing now? Well, he has two jobs, actually. He works for the Forest Service and just received uh, an appointment as the regional packer for Region 5 of the Forest Service. And they have established a, uh, a pack station of excellence, and that's not the correct name, but it's uh, uh, using the Forest Service uh, pack animals on various forests besides the Inyo National Forest. Mm -hmm. So he works for the Forest Service, and he also, he and his wife own McGee Creek Pack Station. The very same one that you worked at? Yes, when we were first married. So we can call that a Roser and the <laughs> Pack Station Dynasty yes. right here in the Mammoth Lakes and area. Lee's, uh, wife, Jen <clears throat> excuse me, Lee's wife, Jennifer, operates the pack station because Lee is busy working for the Forest Service, right. and our daughter, Carrie, is working there for them this summer, okay. helping. 
Okay, uh, thank you very much, Mary. That covers uh, a lot of ground. We've got a good background on roles that you played with. Thank you.